just walked through it, straight through my shot, sorry.
Everybody. Could I ask everyone to stand, please, for the arrival of the first and second processions? Please be upstanding for the arrival of the first procession. Please be seated.
Pray silence for his honour, the first deemster and clerk of the rolls. I call upon the Lord Bishop to say prayers. Ligdun Padre Igul, let us pray. God, our Father, creator of heaven and earth, bless with your gracious favour this island and nation. Lead us in the ways of justice, truth and peace. Give wisdom and insight to all those who exercise authority here. And especially today, we pray for your servant, John, now to be sworn in as Lieutenant Governor. Unite us in the service of your kingdom and of this people, and make us a God-fearing nation regarding your laws and living together in love and concord. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, King of kings and Lord of lords, we pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, Lord of man, and for all those who hold office in her name. We pray for the Honourable Court of Tinwald, for the President of Tinwald, the Speaker of the House of Keys, for all honourable members, and for our Chief Minister. We pray for the Deemsters and for all who administer the law. So rule the hearts of us that we may wisely and justly fulfil the trust imparted to us for the good of this island and for your great glory. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you and we ask you in your love to behold all who live here. May your blessing rest upon the labours of our minds and hearts. Keep us in your name and all those who go down to the sea in ships and who travel by land or by air. Bless those who work in the industry, commerce and professions of this land. Help us to order with grace and dignity our common life in town and sheeding, that we may live and our children grow in health and godliness. May your grace be with all who visit our shores, that they may find restoration of body and soul. And with us may glorify you, the giver of all good things, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we bring all these our prayers together by saying the prayer our Saviour himself taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Spaniat ye uliniat linere mach spirit nu di rani masto este hantin medu es un di bre. Amen. I call upon the Chief Secretary to read the warrant of Her Majesty the Queen. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and of our other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to our trusty and well-beloved Lieutenant General Sir John Gordon Lorimer, Knight Commander of our Most Honourable Order of the Bath, Companion of our Distinguished Service Order, Member of our Most Excellent Order of British Empire, Greeting. We, reposing a special trust and confidence in your loyalty, courage and prudence, do by these present constitute and appoint you to be, commencing on and from the 29th of September 2021, our Lieutenant Governor of our island, Castle Peel and Lordship of Man, and all the islands, forts, castles and Lordship to our said island of Man, appertaining to have, hold, and enjoy the said place and office during our pleasure, with all rights, privileges, and advantages to the same belonging or appertaining. You are therefore on and from that date 
carefully and diligently to discharge the duty of Lieutenant Governor of our said island by doing and performing all and all manner of things thereunto belonging. And we do hereby ordain that our first deemster and clerk of the rolls, on, or in the event of his inability to act, our second deemster shall, after taking the oath, discharge the duties of Lieutenant Governor whenever owing to your absence from the island or any other cause you are unable to discharge the duties of your office until such time as you shall resume the duties or until we signify our further pleasure in that behalf. And all and singular our officers, ministers and loving subjects of our said island and all accordingly. Given at our court at St. James's, the 14th day of September 2021, in the 70th year of our reign, by Her Majesty's Command, Robert Buckland. Sir John and Lady Lorimer, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and may I offer an especial welcome to our very recently elected members of the House of Keys, whom I am deems to need him swore into office yesterday, and to the Chief Minister, uh, who seems to be well on the road to recovery, I'm pleased to say. Primarily, however, may I offer you, Sir John and Lady Lorimer, a very warm welcome to the Isle of Man, and to this historic castle, Castle Russian, the seat of the Kings and Lords of Man, and the traditional location for these special occasions. I am delighted that you have been joined by members of your family today, and I feel sure that you will thoroughly enjoy your time with us on this beautiful island over the next few years as you make it your home. The Isle of Man has enjoyed a strong connection with the Crown for centuries. We are here to witness the taking of the Oath of Allegiance to the Crown and the Oath of Lieutenant Governor in the latest embodiment of that connection. Sir John, in taking those oaths, you will become the representative of Her Majesty the Queen the successor to the Lords of Man and the Viking Kings of Man and the Isles. Through your office, you demonstrate our continued allegiance, which we share with others under the crown. One of the clearest examples of this allegiance is the service that generations of Manx men and women have given to the armed forces of the crown, including in conflicts large and small across the globe. It is therefore a particular pleasure to welcome as Lieutenant Governor such an accomplished officer of the British Army. With your wide and distinguished international experience and knowledge, I know that you will be able to have a clear and well-informed focus on the challenges that the island faces at what has been an unprecedented time in our recent history. I trust that in due course, Sir John, you will be able to report to Her Majesty that the Isle of Man is resilient, in good heart, and is well-governed. We cherish our traditions, but we, will, but we also take great pride in our ability to innovate economically, evolve constitutionally, and to undertake our international commitments responsibly. Across the world, the past 18 months has presented challenges which beforehand would have been unimaginable. But what this time has shown, and what many of us have drawn such comfort from, is the power and strength of the island's community. In our time of need, the island pulled together and supported each other, particularly our most vulnerable. However, for those who know our island well, this response was not a surprise. As well as coming to a beautiful island, you and Lady Lorimer have come to a place which possesses a very strong sense of community. I am sure that in the years ahead, you will both come to feel a real part of our open and welcoming society and make many friends within it. Sir John, the Isle of Man is a proud island with a rich history and many aspirations for the future. We are an island that punches above its weight in many areas, including in our sporting and cultural endeavours. <coughs> One need only think of Mark Cavendish's record equaling exploits in the Tour de France or Samantha Barks's star performances in the West End as evidence of what our talented sons and daughters can achieve. I hope that when your term of office comes to an end, you and Lady will look back on your years on this island with great satisfaction, immense pleasure, and real affection. I extend to you a very warm Manx welcome 
and wish you, Sir John, all the very best for your time as Lieutenant Governor of the Isle of Man. Pray stand in silence for the administration of the oaths of office. of this island, I have the honour to hand you, sir, the Staff of Government. I, John Gordon Lorimer, do swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors. So help me God. I, John Gordon Lorimer, do swear that I will truly and uprightly deal between our Sovereign Lady the Queen and her subjects within this isle, and as indifferently as between party and party, as this staff now standeth, so far as in me lieth, and that I will in any matter concerning the state and government of this isle act in accordance with the constitution and ancient customs thereof and that I will do and perform so far as in me lieth these and all other things appertaining to the government of this isle and the post and office of Lieutenant Governor and Captain General, according to the extent and purport of my commission. So help me God and by the contents of this book. I invite His Excellency to sign the Liber Juramentorum, which reads that on this day the oath of allegiance and the oath of office of Governor or Lieutenant Governor of this Isle were taken by Lieutenant General Sir John Gordon Lorimer, KCB DSO MBE, sworn Lieutenant Governor of this Isle by virtue of a warrant under the Queen's sign manual dated the 14th day of September 2021. If I could invite you. Your Excellency, to sign that. Thank you. I will now witness that signature. the honour to deliver this seal public of the Isle of Man to you for safe custody. Chief Secretary, I deliver this seal public of the Isle of Man to you for safe custody. Please be seated. I now call upon the Chair of the Castletown Town Commissioners to address the Lieutenant Governor. Pastor Ma, Your Excellency, on behalf of the people of Castletown and the Isle of Man, I warmly welcome you to the ancient capital of Man and this magnificent medieval castle we are currently in, the finest preserved in Europe, I believe. I have given instructions today that no one should be imprisoned in the cells for their political views, so you're all safe. <laughs> Not so sure about me, though, as I think at least one of my ancestors was burnt at the stake at the town square, so I'll be quick. <laughs> Castletown is such an ancient, ancient history, and I would be honoured to share it with you during your tenure here on our magical island and formally offer an invitation to you and your family to have a tour of our town, of which I'm immensely proud to be chairman. Sir, it's with the greatest of pleasure that I, on behalf of Castletown and its people, have witnessed your swearing in ceremony amongst such esteemed guests here today. In Manx, may I wish you and your family 
Shlantashi as Eshtave as Manra's son the bra. Health and peace and length of life and happiness forever. Thank you. Your Honour, First uh, Deemster, Mr. President, Chief Minister, Mr. Speaker, my Lord Bishop, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, and new friends whom we hope to meet over the next few months, fast am I. Thank you very much indeed, Your Honour and Madam Chairman, for your kind words of welcome and encouragement, and for the generous and inspiring Welcome to Castletown and Ellen Bannon. Thank you also to everyone involved in the organisation of today's arrangements. And I should also like to thank um, the many people who have written to us since my appointment was announced. We are most grateful for the way in which people have welcomed us so generously. Philip and I are delighted to be here on what is technically our first overseas posting. To make our home in the Isle of Man for five years is a very appealing prospect, providing an element of continuity and stability that we have not experienced before, having moved uh, some 15 times in 27 years. I am in no doubt uh, that our five years here will be hugely enjoyable on an island that is renowned for its community spirit, friendliness and quality of life. But today I have sworn an oath, and I have committed myself uh, to be the island's 31st Lieutenant Governor. This is a serious oath, and to be chosen by the representatives of the Manx people and appointed by our sovereign to this role is both an honour and a privilege. I am conscious that my two last two predecessors were not military and that the last army officer to hold this appointment was Sir Lawrence New in the 1980s, who, of course, he's well known to many of you. So I'm in no doubt that we will be different to our immediate predecessors. But in, in today's world, change is the norm, and it is perhaps something that we should all welcome. Indeed, this island perhaps provides a perfect example of balancing change and evolution with tradition and continuity. In recent years, you have embraced science, technology, and high-end manufacturing, whilst maintaining a foundation uh, based on more traditional activities, such as fishing, agriculture, and tourism. You have evolved your constitution, laws, and economy to be better placed to deal with the internal and international challenges whether driven by financial shocks or those emerging from the unexpected, uh, such as the global pandemic. To a newcomer, the Isle of Man, with your autonomy as a separate nation under the crown, seems well set to deal with the inevitable ambiguity and complexity of the 21st century and beyond. As you said, uh, Your Honour, the Isle of Man has long-standing connections with the armed forces, with many Manx men and women serving the Crown over the years. I have no doubt that this will continue, and by chance tomorrow evening, I will be formally presenting the annual Cadets Awards at a reception at Government House. But whilst I've had a varied and interesting career in the military, serving across the world, uh, but with a particular focus in the Middle East. I intend to be doing a lot, of a lot more listening than talking in my first few months in the role. Indeed, I expect to be learning a lot from the Manx people, who I hope will share with us what they know about the island's distinctive history, special cultural heritage, and unique customs and traditions. Given the 1,000-year democracy democratic tradition of Tinwald Court, which I visit tomorrow, my five-year tenure is clearly just a, a blip on the island's history. 
I therefore have a lot of catching up to do, best achieved, I think, by engaging with everyone. I also look forward to exploring the island with Philippa, its coastal paths and mountain routes, its glens and beaches, investigating its flora and fauna, and assessing the opportunities for sports and cycling, although I'm not sure that I'll be able to keep up with the Manx missile. <laughs> also, other cultural activities and family outdoor pursuits. So I admit we are very much uh, new to the Isle of Man. Indeed, when I was interviewed uh, for this appointment in March, I was asked whether I had any connections to the island. I responded that I did not. However, it uh, subsequently transpires that this was not true. I now understand that I do indeed have a family connection in that through my mother, the seventh Earl of Derby, James Stanley, was my great grandfather times 12. <laughs> now, as you will doubtless be aware, James Stanley is sometimes known as the Great Stanley. He was feudal Lord of Man from 1627 for some 27, 24 years. He was an ardent supporter of the king, and during the English Civil War, he fought for the royalist cause, mostly unsuccessful, unsuccessfully, I, uh, it appears. He lived here in Castle Russian, often leaving his wife, Charlotte, who seemed to have been a formidable lady, in charge of the defense of the island. But the great Stanley was eventually captured by the parliamentarians, court-martialed for treason, <coughs> and executed in Bolton in 1651 by beheading. So, Ma Madam Chairman, like you, I too have an ancestor who has met, <laughs> <laughs> who has met an untimely and slightly unpleasant death. But in truth, I hope that my time on the island uh, is less dramatic than his, and I do not, certainly do not wish to emulate his manner of demise. However, I have no doubt that should it be required, Philippa would ably defend Government House. <laughs> as, a, as an operationally experienced former army officer and the daughter of a royal engineer. Our disappointment is that there is only one cannon outside the house. <laughs> Now, in his final interview before leaving, my predecessor, Sir Richard Gosney, said that the island was welcoming and quietly self, a quietly self-confident community, very much at ease with itself. Philippa and I have already experienced that generous welcome, and we look forward to engaging with the island's community. The Isle of Man has a great reputation for its community spirit its ethos of voluntary work, and its many charity organizations, a number of which we hope to support through our patronage. As new newcomers from across, we intend to get out and about, meet as many people as we can from all different backgrounds, walks of life, and in all types of settings, <coughs> to learn from them and to hear about their families and their interests. We hope that by joining you, we can help others and strengthen that overall feeling of community. In conclusion, it is very clear that the Manx people are rightly proud of their island's history and achievements, but with an eye for future opportunities in an ever-evolving world, but not at any cost. And I highlight here your impressive focus on conservation, biodiversity, and the island's habitat and wildlife. We are thrilled to be joining the island community, and we look forward to the challenges of the next five years. But I know that it will take time and effort from my part to earn your trust and respect. You will have high expectations of me. So with humility and a slight sense of trepidation, I commit myself wholeheartedly to supporting the Manx people and working very closely to and in harmony with the island's government in furthering the island's reputation and interests. I will serve the island and its people to the very best of my ability. We are delighted to be making our home here and are very much looking forward to playing a full 
and positive part in community life, supporting the development of the island and representing Her Majesty the Queen, Lord of Man. Thank you very much indeed, uh, again, for your kind welcome here today. Guramai Muayu. Thank you. I hereby declare that His Excellency Lieutenant General Sir John Gordon Lorimer has been duly sworn in as Lieutenant Governor of the Isle of Man and that these proceedings now stand adjourned. She as Ra Doro Eru. Please be upstanding while the official party withdraws. Please be seated.